37 to 34 is the scores. We look at the highlights. Yeah, and it was back and forth really from the get-go. Colorado State jumped out to an early lead. Loyola bounced back in emphatic fashion with great games from Uglock. And then Williamson really found a stroke at the end. Crutwig and Carvacho battling down low. The two big men really kind of held in check because of each other. Now, Crutwig does have double digits and leads the way for Loyola. However, Carvacho just two points on one of four shooting. The scoring for Colorado State has come for, from the combination of Kendall Moore and Isaiah C Stevens. The underclassman guard play for Colorado State has really been the key, but it's been the big men leading the way for Loyola and the Ramblers. Absolutely. I have loved that matchup, Carvacho and Krutwig. Although this guy had a nice first half, Chris Martin. And a lot of the guys stepping up, including Tanjay, who came off the bench for the first time here in the tournament. Yeah, he even had a little bit of an impact early on, and I, I liked what he brings to the table, one of two from the field. Only played three minutes, but he picked up a turnover, scored on a, a nice little lay-in, and then really Kendall Moore was just a catalyst for Loyola, I mean for, excuse me, Colorado State in that second half as well. He really picked up the scoring, actually helped Colorado State build a four-point lead in the middle of that first half, but now it's Loyola with that one possession advantage, their largest lead, around six points back when it was 23-17, but they have ended on a 5-0 run and really uh, led the way toward the end of the first half. Now it's interesting to see what the chess match is going to look like between these two head coaches. You've got Moser on one side for Loyola Chicago, then Medved for Colorado State. Which coach makes the right adjustments at the halftime break to really give themselves an advantage because right now it's about as even as asked for. Nice play inside. Loyola gets the first bucket, 37-34. to 34. Two leading scorers in the game right now. Kendall Moore for Colorado State and Cameron Crutwig for Loyola. Each has not missed a shot from the field. And there's a nice three by Hall. And you look at the Loyola bench, it's Hall, the catalyst. Second player in double figures for Loyola today. Now three of six shooting, two of three from behind the arc. And on four rebounds and three assists, each leading the Ramblers in that category. So Hall's had a nice all-around game. got gets it off to Martin. Here's Martin, uses a pick by Carvacho. Good give and go, and Carvacho can't get the shot to go, but he will go to the line. That's a nice little give and go pass there by Martin to Carvacho, who tried to finish, and he'll get a pair of opportunities at the foul line. Yeah, and Loyola came out of the halftime break in a 2-3 zone. One of the best ways to defeat a 2-3 zone is either find an open shooter on the perimeter with some good ball movement, or have a cut inside with a big man. And I think Carvacho is expected to see a little bit of zone coming into the second half. Good coaching by Nico Medved because he started on that elbow, broke down low whenever you saw Crutwig cheat up in the middle of the lane looking to cover what was then a driving Isaiah Stevens, but then Stevens dished it off to Crutwig, or to Carvacho rather, and he had a wide open look with Crutwig behind him. 
Tough luck for Krupwig missing the free throw. One more coming. Got that one. Five point lead now for Loyola. Under 19 minutes to play, second half. Consul uh, consolation semifinals. Krupwig. Good move on Carvacho. Carvacho gets the board though. First miss from the field for Crutwig today, and he backed down Carvacho, had him a step off into his left shoulder. Usually Crutwig able to convert on those looks. Carvacho, he'll get the foul. More free throws coming for Carvacho. That's really where he struggled yesterday. He got to the free throw line a good amount of times, got through 12 times yesterday, went 6 of 12, missed half of his free throws. This time picked up on the double team. Two big frames down low with Hall and Crutwig. Really draped all over him, and no chance for Cavaccio to shake his way free. And even today, his free throw shooting has not been on point. One for four, now one of five from the strike. Yeah, that's tough luck when you have that going on. Five-point lead. Colorado State now one for seven at the line as a team. Three of four for Loyola. Well, on both occasions, the second one looked awesome, and the first one's not so much. <laughs> Six points left on the board right now for Colorado State. I mean, that's the difference between you and a two-point lead. You expect to miss a free throw every now and again, but they call it the charity strike for a reason. You've got to take advantage when you're at the strike. Lucas Williamson guarded tightly by Isaiah Stevens. Hall, good move on Thistlewood. Tried to bank it off the side of the rim, and here comes Colorado State's Martin. Rams really slowing it down here in the second half. Carvacho on Krutwig, double team now. Carvacho has to get rid of it. He doesn't get rid of it, and instead he shoots it. A little off to Martin. Nice nifty move. Couldn't get it to go down, though. That double team has been tough for Carvacho, especially with Hull. Speaking of Hall, he makes the three in the corner. He has found his stroke from deep. Had just a two from beyond the arc yesterday. Now has three in the game already. Three of four from long distance. And that went all the way into the corner. That was a nice look from the entire Loyola offense as he really found a way open. Hall leads the way with 14 points. Colorado State coming back. Down by seven. Three ball by Martin, a little short, Williamson with the board. Loyola wanting to run. Here's Hall, another three, and that's off the front iron. We have a loose ball foul, that'll go on this side of the court, Colorado State. The officials, by the way, Kip Kissinger, Pat Adams, and Tony Shiazza. Shiazza, we didn't see him yesterday, so he must have been the alternate. In these tournaments, not only do you bring a bunch of teams, you bring a bunch of officials. Ton of officials going through the tournaments, and they've done a nice job so far. Had some tight calls yesterday, some judgmental calls, and of course, one team's not going to be happy with it, but overall, I thought it was a very well-officiated first day of the tournament. Get it down. Oh, beautiful oh. tip. He didn't even catch it. He just tipped it in off the pass. That is a beauty by Krupwig. That's a full 255-pound big man elevating to get the pass in the air and then putting it in the bottom of the net in one stroke. That was impressive and athletic from Krupwig. Yeah, I want to see that again later. Martin outside tries to maneuver. He does. Beautiful spin. Missed it off the side, though. Wojcik with the rebound. Here comes Loyola. Hall. Krupwig again. Scores again. Timeout. Colorado State. Back-to-back -back interior buckets by Krutwig, and both a thing of beauty. He cannot find a rhythm against that Colorado State defense or else he will make you pay. And he did just that right there. 14.7 of 8 from the field, and he's done it in a multitude of different ways. Yeah, let's take a look, if we can, at what he did just now. I love that tip shot because it wasn't just an errant pass, him trying to tip it. It was a pass, and it was right off the pass, right into the hoop. That was a beauty right there by Krutwig. Then he comes back on a nice play, getting the pass inside. 
and Welcome back here to the Cayman Islands Classic. Scott Colletti along with Kyle Yeomans. Ended up being a full timeout, the first timeout of the half. I got crossed up there thinking it was a 30. So let's go back to Cameron Crutwig. Kyle is outstanding play there as you see the score, 47 to 36. But Crutwig with a beauty. The first one, good interior pass by Hall and a little tip shot by Crutwig. Then he would come back on the fast break, finishing off. Yeah, and using the body against Roddy, of course, Roddy, a, a much smaller individual, 6'5", 250 pounds. Weight-wise, they match up well, but the height absolutely advantage Crutwig, and he's had 14 points, a total of those coming in the second and a half of six already, and he's 7 of 8 shooting, five rebounds to go along with that. And it really helped this 15-2 run, now 15-4 run for Loyola. How about Loyola. Roddy going right at Crutwig and making that bucket? And that's really what we saw from Roddy yesterday. Does not back down from a bigger defender. No, he was going after New Mexico State's big defender a lot yesterday. Crutwig, speaking of big defenders. Good movement by Loyola as Hall drives and scores. This is the hole that we expected to see yesterday. It really seemed like right in the middle of that loss that he needed to step up, and there's Roddy stepping up from three on the other end. Well, we saw Roddy take over at a point yesterday, and now all of a sudden he's looking at the scoreboard saying, you know what, I got to do something, and he's doing something right now. Yeah, back and forth between Hall and Roddy. Now they aren't matched up on each other defensively on that side of the floor, but on the offensive end for each side, doing their work. And there is a foul, and that will go against Colorado State. And a media timeout coming up, 14.49 to go in the second half. Loyola by eight. Trey Hall on a good drive. 
Yeah, Hall's been impressive so far. And then on the other end, it was Roddy answering from beyond the arc. If Colorado State's going to get back in this game, they're going to need some output from guys like Chris Martin and then also David Roddy. Martin, at the moment, 0 for 3 from the field, has not shot the rock well. David Roddy, on the other hand, five points, which is really about half of the total that he had yesterday as he was up near the dozen mark, but has not had as big of an impact as he did in the loss yesterday against New Mexico State. It'll be interesting to see how the Rams get him involved as this game grows older. Roddy, watch for number 21. He has the ball right now. Kendall Moore, who can shoot from the outside. Now it's Roddy to Thistlewood. Good hands by Loyola. Tie up. Are they going to call a foul or a tie up? Looks like a foul. Yeah, they're going to call Tate Hall there. You can't jump on top of Thistlewood. The ball went to the ground. Thistlewood did the smart thing, and he curled it up almost like an onside kick would on the football field. Just curl it up, lay on top of the ball, and then Tate Hall just kind of landed on top of and You can't necessarily do that. Not necessarily? No, that's not, not <laughs> what you're normally used to doing. You can't just jump on top of another player. Now Loyola not happy with it. Coach Moser over on this near sideline is pleading his case to the officials as we take another look. The ball just knocked out. Nice, solid hands by Skokma there. Or Skokma, excuse me. But Hall, there it is, right on top of that left hit. And you see that Thistlewood visibly in pain. He'll get checked out of the game and checked on by the training staff. Hopefully he's okay and will return for Colorado State. Just a foul on the floor, though. Good drive by Edwards. Couldn't get it, though. Tries to fight for his own rebound. Grabbed by Loyola. Here comes Uguay. Uguak brings a lot of energy out there. He can ball handle. He can jump through the ceiling. And he is lightning quick. Aganani with the ball. Bruno Skokna, number four out there. And Aganani hits a 10-footer in the lane. He's got some pretty good range for a big guy. He showed it off a little bit there. Now Loyola going back to a man-to-man -man on the defensive side, but it's notable to say that Krutwig not in the ball game. See if Colorado State feeds it down low to Carvacho, tries to get him going. Edwards looking in there, got it on the base with 10. Good give and go to Edwards. Roddy open for three. That's too long. Long rebound to Wojcik. Paxson Wojcik. Loyola team has a lot of size, strength, and speed out there. Good mixture of youth and some talented upperclassmen as well. Williamson on Roddy. That's a good matchup. Williamson picked up by Carvacho. Uguak with two. Has to hurry. Too strong. Uguak tried to get the board, and Colorado State does. Here come the Rams the other way. All the way to the hoop is Martin, and he couldn't get it. Colorado State's got to get better looks at the hoop. These are low percentage shots. You're forcing turnovers on the other end, but you haven't scored in almost three minutes of game action. You've got to find some open looks. Yeah, they found another steal. Here is a shot by Stevens off the mark. Nothing going right for Colorado State, it seems, right now. And Uguak will slow it up. A 10-point lead. For Loyola. Just the first miss of the game for Isaiah Stevens. Previously was 4-4 from the field, but still kind of a low percentage look, falling off into his left, pulling up in the middle of the lane. Skokna for three, couldn't get it off the bench, and it goes out of bounds to Colorado State. Timeout on the court. 11.57 to play in the second half. Loyola by 10 on Flow Sports.
Loyola leading by 10 here in the Cayman Islands Classic. One of the reasons why the Ramblers have gotten off to such a hot start today. Colorado State's big man, Nico Carvacho, held to just four points, one of five shooting, and then two of six from the free throw line. They're fouling Carvacho early. He has not found a rhythm. And whether or not Cameron Crutwig is in the game to defend Carvacho, it really hasn't paid dividends at all for Colorado State. And one of the things that Colorado State has been doing in these last couple of possessions, Scott, is they have gotten out of their game plan. Their game plan is to attack the middle, whether it be by Roddy, whether it be by Nico Carvacho, Neither one of those have been working, so they're trying to go back to that perimeter game with Chris Martin, Kendall Moore, and Isaiah Stevens, those three leading the way scoring-wise for the Rams, but it hasn't worked out because it's also forced a total of 10 turnovers, and about seven of those have come here in the second half. Now, one thing that's good for Colorado State to look at it's the fact that Nico Carvacho only had three points in the first half of yesterday's game, ended up with 18, and it was a big reason why they were able to come back from a double-digit deficit. And we'll see if they can do it again here, down by 10. Zone applied by Loyola now. I'll tell you, a big zone with Hall and Uguak on the outside with long arms and good rebound by Uguak. That was an aggressive rebound. Like you talked about the zone, he was on the outside, mm -hmm. came flying in, went over the top of really the entire Colorado State rebounding core down low and was able to rip that one away. That was impressive. Gets the ball now to Zugwak. High arching shot way off the mark. Thistlewood with the board and here comes Colorado State. Don't see that a whole lot where it goes up and over the backboard and then still stays in play. Thistlewood for three. He had two early. Can't get that one. That's a second straight possession for Colorado State. That has resulted in a shot from three-point land that has missed and has been within 10 seconds running off of the shot clock. That's not what Colorado State's game is. Good move inside, but unable to get it. The big guy, Krupwig, and here comes Colorado State. Down the lane, Edwards, blocked by Hall. And Hall almost got it, and somehow, some way, it went off of Colorado State. You what a play. Bench. How about Tate Hall right on the baseline, Gobbling that one up off of the attempt there from Edwards. And then, yeah, went right off of the pinky finger of Roddy's right arm. Good call from the officials and a great play from Tate Hall. So, Crutwig, as unfortunately some of the students across from us are making it to the exits. <laughs> They really add it to the atmosphere here, the students. They've been loud. Way outside, Colorado State, Edwards. They feed it to Carvacho on Crutwick. Crosses it, Thistlewood for three from the corner. Too strong, and rebound Crutwick. You knew it the minute it went off his hands. Yeah, you could kind of see it was going to be a little bit long, and it was another shot that looked open initially, but this Loyola defense has really done a nice job closing out on the perimeter. And that's really why I think Colorado State has struggled is because this Loyola defense has traveled much easier and much quicker than they anticipated. Krutwig had it blocked away by Carvacho, who looks down at Krutwig saying, hey, you're not getting by me, although Carvacho's had pretty good success getting by him. Nice job by Carvacho st sticking with Crutwig step for step the entire way. And he kind of was anticipating each one of the moves that we've seen from Qu Crutwig. Looking at the left hook, he was there. Tried to go up and under, he was there. So multiple chances for Carvacho. And inside is Hall. So Hall got inside and scored. He's slippery for a big man. He will find his way into open space. And you won't even realize it. It's one of the reasons why he's at 18 tonight. Foul inside called. Boy. 
9 11 to play in the second half. Loyola by 12. Get a look at Roddy right there. Roddy, a talented freshman, 6'5", 250, out of St. Paul, Minnesota. We mentioned state champion in football, the quarterback, state champion in track. He's built like a quarterback. I can see that. Finalist Mr. Basketball, finalist Mr. Minnesota. Good defense again by Loyola. The Ramblers get the ball. Tom Welsh with the Aaron pass, and here comes Williamson. Loyola still in their methodical offense. Hall looking in. Crutwig wasn't open. Good steal. Here comes Moore on a two-on-two. -two. Moore to the basket. Reverse. It's good. He is fouled. Man, he accelerated right there, Kyle. Could that be the jolt? That really leads Colorado State into a little bit of a run here. The steal. The streak down the left side of the floor. And then the foul, Williamson did everything he could to try and avoid Moore to make that bucket, but an elusive shot attempt from Moore, and it does drop. Can't get the free throw to fall, and that's been unfortunate. Now two of nine as a team for the, for the entire game for Colorado State, but the Rams now have a little bit of life, and it has really been from Moore. Crutwick outside. He lobs to Welsh, and a hold is called on Colorado State. Game has slowed down a little bit, Kyle, here in the second half because of the whistles, but this is a very, and I mean very, physical game. Yeah, it's been physical, but also the speed, I think, has been on showcase That's for both who, sides yes, as well. You it, are correct. Really, at the beginning, both teams wanted to run, which surprised me a little bit, especially for Colorado State. I know Loyola likes to run with the size advantage that they have. Question is, whose ball is it? And do we have an answer? Yes. Colorado State's ball. Now they're going to call a kick ball. Out of play off of the foot of one of the Loyola defenders, or I guess that time offensive players, as both Crutwig and Hall check out. Now, this is... Significant. This is the first time that we haven't seen both of those individuals on the floor at the same time for Loyola today. Let's see what kind of unit comes out for Colorado State. They've got Stevens out there. Carvacho stays on the floor more. It's the entire starting lineup with the exception of Roddy being in there. This is a big opportunity for Colorado State to get some points on the board. Here comes Moore. This will win. More on the drive. <laughs> Speaking of the speed, that time it looked like he was a little too fast for himself, although the ball was tapped by Loyola. Colorado State now with 12 to shoot. Down by 10. Time out on the court. It is Loyola with a 10 point lead. The Cayman Islands Classic on Flow Sports.
Look at the Colorado State bench. They are down by 10. I'm Scott Colletti along with Kyle Yeoman. Seeing a good one here in the first game of day two of the Cayman Islands Classic. The Constellation semifinals and Colorado State has played well. Loyola has just played a tad better. Yeah, and Colorado State has really not had a rhythm throughout the course of the ball game. You still talk about Carvacho sitting at four points and he hasn't even taken a shot attempt here in the, the last eight or nine minutes of gameplay. Made one right at the start of the second half and that's his only attempt so far since the break. But one of eight from the field on their last eight shots and they have gone one of six, the last six from beyond the arc. The Rams have just not had any rhythm whatsoever. Kendall Moore has really been the one bright spot for Colorado State, but now with the personnel that's on the floor, you have all the starters out there for Colorado State except for David Roddy, who now is in instead. This is a big chance for Colorado State to try and make a run. They almost turned it over right before the break. They get it back, though. Roddy for three with the shot clock going down, and the shot goes down. That is a freshman stepping up in a big situation. Team down by 10, hand in his face, shot clock dwindling down. And he's able to tink, twinkle the twine right there in an impressive shot. Now it's a freshman who wanted the ball, Kyle. That was the key to that. Agonani on the outside. Down the lane with Skokna. They have to get it off, and they don't. Wojcik made it. It does not count. Porter Mosier not happy right there in his ninth year at Loyola. We talked about the notable substitutions. Hall and Krupwig both out of the game for the first time together today. Well, they both quickly inserted right back into the lineup, and here goes Colorado State. On a small 5-0 run in the last two minutes, it's taken a little bit of time, but the defense starting to step up. We'll see if the offense can follow. Roddy. Here's a three by Moore, and he buries it. Just like that, back-to-back -back trifectas. Cuts the lead, 53-49. to This is going to be a 30-second timeout, Kyle, and... You know, the three ball, Roddy wanted the ball, made that three, and then more in the corner. That's his sweet spot. And yeah, we talked about the struggling from the field for Colorado State. They've now made three of their last four. Kendall Moore, though, leading the way for the Rams. 15 points, six of six from the field. He hasn't missed yet. You got to get the ball into Kendall Moore's hands. He's been three of three from behind the arc. The only place he's missed today was from the free throw line where he's 0 of two. Well, how about this? Colorado State, 50 percent, 19 of 38, but they're 52.9 from long range. Yeah. Nine of 17. That's really been the key of them staying in the ball game is hitting some crucial threes late. They have four players on the roster right now with multiple three point makes. Downtown has been their best friend. At one point trailing by at least 12. Well, now they've had an 8-0 run, and they're back within four. Here's where the defense has to step up again. You start feeling a little bit of timeout from Coach Moser and that Loyola Chicago sign. Trying to slow down the momentum. Colorado gets a stop here. It's right back in their favor, though. Ugwak fed it into the corner. There's a three, and that's short by Skokna. But the rebound, Krutwig on Roddy. Krutwig takes him to the hole. Short. Roddy with the tap. Look at the fight out of the freshman. He gets the ball. And a loose ball foul. You talk about a guy who is a grinder. And Roddy, we were told yesterday, this guy is about as intense as they come. And he has really delivered the goods when it comes to that. He needed to be intense right here with Garvancho out of the game. He has no backside help. That's one-on-one, -on -one, mano a mano. Roddy standing up to one of the best big men in the country. Krutwig went over the top. Roddy stayed with him. And not only did that happen, but Roddy pulls down the rebound in succession, gets fouled, and then now with Colorado State being in the bonus, is able to have a huge impact with a couple of free throws. 
Roddy hits a free throw. That was a massive play from the freshman. Yeah, it really was. And Colorado State's Forte has not been free throw shooting. Three of 10 now after that make. Three of four for Loyola. But now they're four of 11. Sometimes it doesn't matter if you miss. It's a matter of when you make them. And now it's down to stretch. It's a two-point game. Plenty of time left as well. Colorado State could really get on a run here. 10-0 in the last three minutes plus. Tied up in the corner was Williamson. Here's Hall. Good pull up by Hall right over Thistlewood. 20 points now for Tate Hall. That time went to the left side and was able to drain it from point blank range. Seven of 12 on the day for Hall, having a day. Three of five from long range. Roddy. Thought he was going to shoot there. Instead, got it out to Thistlewood. Roddy again. Guarded tightly by Crutwig. They get it down to Roddy. Roddy stepped by Crutwig. Got it back. Couldn't get it off a second time. And the shot clock goes down. And again, the Loyola fans and their bench erupting. And Roddy yesterday, you see the brace on his left knee had gone down at one point in yesterday's ball game. Now wearing the brace today. I wonder if that pays a little bit of a factor. At that time, it looked like he was very tender, favoring the right leg, and that left leg really kind of following behind. He's having to be physical with Crutwig. That's going to pay dividends for Loyola if Roddy is in 100%. Nice shot there, but it won't count. It's an offensive foul as Colorado State in a dangerous situation taking the charge. And guess who? <laughs> you talked about the intensity that he plays with. How about that? Stepping in front of Ugwak and taking the charge. Who cares if he's not 100%? I take that 100% back. He's proven me wrong. He may not be 100%, but that was a 100% effort play. One thing he is, is a freshman, he does not play like one. No. Stevens couldn't get it. That would have tied, uh, would have made it a two-point game, actually. 55-51, a four-point game. Loyola with the lead. Here's Williamson out top. Ball crosses. Good play inside, and that will be a block as Tom Wells scores. This one will be called with the foul. How about Tom Welsh, a guy who didn't play? He's a freshman, 6'8", out of Naperville, Illinois. And Welsh, who came in averaging two points, has looked very good here today. That's a good call from the officials. It looked like initially Thistlewood was set, but then... I think he hesitated a little bit, and that right foot picked up off of the hardwood, and it would be a blocking foul nine times out of ten, and that time it does go in favor of Loyola. Welch with a couple chances here from the free throw line, a 57% shooter from the stripe this year. Good-looking free throw there by Welch. And all of a sudden, it's a seven-point lead for Loyola. We're down to 435 on the game clock. Still kind of get that feeling that Colorado State's not out of this yet. Still plenty of time, four and a half minutes left. You're only down by seven. Did yourself a favor with the big run you had a moment ago. Roddy got away with a step. They say it was a tap. More for three. Can't get it. Welsh does. The freshman once again coming up with a key rebound. Once again, Roddy trying to pivot and turn like that. It just doesn't look natural. Looks like something underlying there going on he may not be a hundred percent ball on the crossover good bank shot Tate Hall nine point lead for Loyola and timeout called by Nico Medved just wanting to talk it over all of a sudden you're down by nine again after an 8-0 run Loyola Chicago answers with a 7-0 run of their own. 3.54 left, back up to a nine-point lead.
Welcome back here to the Cayman Islands Classic as they were mopping up the floor. And Loyola trying to mop up a victory here, but Colorado State has other plans down by nine with 3.43 to go. Carvacho is back out there for the Rams. Thistlewood, good defense by Williamson, down to five. Here's Stevens, Carvacho, little floater in and out. And it goes off of Loyola, out of bounds to Colorado State. How about Welsh, a freshman? He wanted that play to go against Colorado State. To no avail as he looked at the Colorado State bench. I'm Another at, entertaining game. And looking at the clock, the shot clock is at 20 seconds. I don't know if Loyola really had any possession at that point. Staying on their end, I don't know if the shot clock should have reset, but instead it is an easy bucket on the baseline. Thistlewood found his way open. Yeah, how about that one? Thistlewood on the inbounds play, got the bucket. Colorado State now down by seven, 3-13 to play. Carbacho fouls Krutwig. That's only team foul number four for Colorado State, so no bonus yet. Colorado State's in the bonus, so when they get fouled. Williamson inbounds the ball. Here's Hall, who's a smooth customer, as is this guy, Krutwig. Krutwig on the back down. That's his hook shot. That's off the mark. Caracho with the rebound. Here come the Rams trying to edge their way back into the game. Bucket Caracho. here makes it a three or a two possession game. Driving a Stevens, a little floater that's short. Wojcik got the rebound. And I'd still like that look for Stevens. He's had that look open all day long, but he just cannot get one to rattle home. That's got to be frustrating. Oh, he used a pick by Carvacho. Lost control of it. It remains loyal the ball with 12 to shoot. 225 on the game clock. A seven-point Rambler lead over the Rams. Worth noting, four players for Colorado State in double figures. Moore, Thistlewood, Steven, and Roddy. One name you don't hear there, Carvacho. The impact player, the star center, big man on campus for Colorado State. He has not shown out today. Krutwick has put a lock on him. Williamson tried to can a three, couldn't get it. Here come the Rams quickly. Corner three by Moore. That's short, but Carvacho tapped it off to Thistlewood, who couldn't score, but he is fouled. Thistlewood got the rebound, and Thistlewood will go to the line. Thistlewood 0 of 1 from the free throw stripe today. Hit right off that rim. Good positioning from Thistlewood and Krutwig, or Welch rather, right in the middle with the contact on Thistlewood. Almost got it to drop for what would have been an and one. Step. Yeah, at first I thought that Carvacho had tapped it. He did not. It just went off the rim, like you said. And another miss for Colorado State. And they are kind of killing themselves at the foul line here, Kyle. Nine of 19 as a team. Thistlewood, two of five. Yeah, four of 12. Now four of 
or five of 13. That's still eight points left up on the board free throw wise for Colorado State. And that's not going to win you a whole lot of games if you're shooting free throws out of 38 percentile. Yeah, I was actually given the three-point range. Actually, you are correct. Is Thistlewood one for three and five to 13 as a team? That is still bad. Hall, free throw line jumper. Couldn't get it, and Carbaccio does. That's a big break for Colorado State. Still a two-possession game. You don't need a three yet. Still plenty of time. Just score when you can. Stevens, try to get it back to Carbaccio. Tipped out of bounds. Brutwig with the active hands, jumping out in front of that loose ball, denying any entry pass to Carvacho because he knows as soon as Carvacho gets it, he's still dangerous despite just having the four points. Carvacho way out. More on the drive. He flips it up. That's off the mark. A tough one, and Wojciech got the rebound. Ill-advised. Moore just trying to do what he can. My Loyola defense has been suffocating, and you said it yourself, Scott, said way out for Caravaggio. They don't allow him any real estate down low. That's been really the mantra so far for Loyola, and it has paid off. Trutwig. Minute seven, shot clock is down to four. Tie-up is called officially. They couldn't decide on who it went out on, and now the arrow is pointing. Well, I thought it was pointed to this way. Now they're going to go to the monitor, and they want to take another look at it. Yeah. So they're going to look at it. They're going to take a look and see exactly where this was last touched by, see if we can get a look at it on there. There's another replay. If we can roll that back, might get a better look of that camera angle and see exactly what's going on. Right at the end of that play, all the way down into the corner, after the shot went off, of course, initially it was off of Roddy, and then it was a tipped again all the way through. If we can back that up, right where it makes contact with that hand, who did it come off of last? Did the finger of Crutwig actually tip that basketball? And maybe one more look at it and slow it down even more. We may get a better look. Look at the, the left hand of Roddy right at the end of this play, and then the right hand of Crutway right there. Off of the hand, that's tough to tell. I don't know if we have any other angles or not to be able to look at this, but there's another look right here. That might be able to tell. And it looks like maybe Roddy... We can go back one more time when that left hand of Roddy might have shifted the ball just a hair right at the end of that play. It is so tough to tell. Make contact there, and I think Roddy does make contact on that second hit right there. But it is so hard to tell. We're not the ones that have to decide. No, we are not the ones. <laughs> the guys who are right in front of us are going to be <laughs> making a decision. That is a wild look and about as close as it gets. They're going to stay with a jump ball, which was that the initial is how, call. That's that is how, how close, close it, is. it was, yeah. It's got to be definitive, oh, so that's why they went. That's good officiating because absolutely. they didn't guess and say, oh, one team touched it. They said, hey, let's get together. We're going to call a jump, and then if we see something, then we'll overturn the jump. And even with two clear looks, you still really couldn't tell exactly where the ball was made contact with. And I, I agree with it being Loyola ball. I think Crutwig made contact initially, and then I think Roddy just barely got a pinky finger on it with that right hand at the last moment. They call it a jump ball, which gives the possession arrow to Colorado State now, but it still keeps the ball with Loyola, so I think that's a pretty solid look at it both ways. Feed inside a hole, and that goes out of bounds off of Colorado State. Coach Medved calling for an offensive foul, saying that Hall was grabbing Thistlewood. And I guess shot that would be a violation. shot clock violation. Once again, a two-possession game. The Rams with the ball. Nico Medved 
Talking with one of the officials. With Colorado State with the ball, there shouldn't have been a stoppage of play, and that's where the outrage has been here. There, the shot clock violation right there. And then all of a sudden, Colorado State was on the run. They really wanted that fast break opportunity. That's oh! the one with the triple. Three-point game, 42 seconds to play. What a shot from Thistlewood falling off balance in the corner. Oh, man, this is all of a sudden turned into a one-possession game because of that man right there. 14 points, his third triple of the day, and this one by far was the toughest. Falling out of bounds, he had nowhere to go with that ball, Scott, except for up and in. Yeah, and Wojcik thought he had him covered, and what a shot by that man, Thistlewood. That might be one of the plays of the tournament thus far. South Florida had a buzzer beater yesterday against this Loyola team heading into halftime. That was impressive. That was really a tough shot. Thistlewood looked around, didn't see a green jersey for an outlet pass, and knew his momentum was taking him out of bounds on that baseline. And he knew the only way to go was up. And it found its way to the bottom of the net. That was an impressive shot from Thistlewood. Wow. Good outlet pass there from Carbacho. Just let him a little bit. So we take another look. There you see the pass all the way into the corner and then just putting it up. And it settles home. Thistlewood played it off like he meant to do that the whole time. Now, I'm not sure if that's the case. I wouldn't necessarily put it past him as good as he's been, but that was a great shot from a great shooter. Williamson now as we have 34 seconds to play. Colorado State playing straight defense. Wojcik in the corner, down the four. Here's Williamson for the triple. Long rebound, Colorado State. They'll come on the run. Driving is Stevens. He scores to make it a one-point game, 11.6. Now you got a foul, you got the points now with a foul. Unless they can get a steal, Wojcik gets it, he is fouled. Colorado State fans may be saying, why don't you have a shot at three there? But what this does is it puts points on the board and now, worst case scenario, Loyola either turns it over as they have to inbound it twice, the bonus not paying a factor too well for Colorado State because Loyola has a chance to potentially run out the final 10 seconds here. But even worst case scenario, they make the two free throws and it's still a one possession game and then you throw up a three to try and tie it. Quick foul again. So that's team foul number six with nine seconds on the clock, 9.3 to be exact. Williamson. They called the foul before the ball was even inbounded. That's a smart play. Once upon a time, you couldn't do that, but yeah. now you can. That's smart. Roddy just got a hold of Uguak, and Uguak 0 for 1 from the line as well. This is a 1 and 1. If he misses again, Colorado State can battle for a rebound and not only have to have a three, but with nine seconds left, you can go for a layup just like we saw from Isaiah Stevens. This is a crucial free throw for Uguak and Loyola. Can't get it. They tip it around, and it's Colorado State ball with seven seconds. Wow. Right in the middle, it does go off of the hand down low of Crutwig. They may take a look at it here. At the moment, let's take a look at it ourselves first. Yeah, definitively off of Crutwig's right hand. Good call from the officials. 7.7 .7 on the clock, and it's going to be Colorado State ball with a chance to win it, Scott. See what they do here. Stevens. Drives, floater, got it! 0 0.6! They're gonna look at the clock here now. 
They want to take a look at the clock, so if we can get the clock for the officials. The best way to look at this is from the, the back baseline. Another great look, looking straight at the basket. Shot is up. Maybe even need another angle with it, maybe from right underneath the bucket. As Stevens was able to get it to go from underneath his own bucket, I think you can see the opposite scoreboard. If we can switch this camera angle, we'll get a better look. There, we might see the clock in the background there. If we can slow it down, you see it off of the hands, 2.1, two seconds, and then right when it goes through the net, at about 1.1 or one. That's tough. And we can go back maybe a little bit right there and let it go. It may just be one even set it. second. Now they're going to put .9 on the clock for Loyola Chicago to answer. The freshman, Isaiah Stevens, converts. Wow. Colorado State trying to pull off the stunner here. They have 9.0 on the clock. They're trying to adjust it here. Yeah, it's supposed to be .9 on the clock. Yeah, they're working on it. Timeout in the meantime is called by Colorado State. The question is, is it a full or a 30? It looks like they're going to call a full here. So we will take a timeout. Or no, we'll stay right here, actually. We'll keep it right here. Now we've got to stay here and talk this through. Just a 30-second quick timeout while they get the clock reset now Colorado State what a run they've been on a 10-0 run to close out what could be a monumental comeback one second on the clock is where we're going to start that's enough to get it inbounded and then take a final shot and let it go. There you see what could be the game winner, and there's our clock. You know, it's kind of wow. funny, Kyle. You called it when you said, hey, they can go for a three or they can go for the win of Stevens, maybe a layup, and that looked almost identical to the one that he did to pull them closer. Just a previ uh, the previous possession, and it's wild the fact that Colorado State is going to win because of a Loyola missed free throw, whereas Loyola's free throw shooting has been solid today. And Colorado State's has been the one that's been dismal. But here it is, final possession, one tick on the clock. The baseball it down court to intercept a Carvacho, and the game is over. And Colorado State comes all the way back to win the ball game 61 to 60 over the Loyola Ramblers. What a game we just saw and what a battle we just saw with a couple of outstanding teams, the Rams and the Ramblers. And the Ramblers had this game pretty much the whole day, but it ends up being the Colorado State Rams winning it. Loyola falls to three and four. And they get the big victory here today as Colorado State, after the loss to New Mexico State in tough luck fashion yesterday, they come back with a big win. So we're going to try getting the head coach here, Colorado State, storming off the court. So hopefully we'll be able to get the head coach here. Kyle will run and make that happen. And in the meantime, I'll give you the leaders here. For Colorado State, they were led by Moore. Moore with 15 points. Thistlewood and Stevens each with 14 points. Moore on six of nine shooting. Stevens six of nine shooting. Nico Carvacho had a tough luck game. He only had one of six shooting for four points as Colorado State 23 of 48 on the day. Loyola was led by Hall, 22 points on 8 of 14 shooting. 
We go to Kyle now with Nico Medved, the head coach of Colorado State. Yeah, thank you very much, Scott and Coach Medved. An unbelievable comeback from your squad, a 10-0 run to close that out. And what are you, what's going through your mind right now? Tell you what, we've been in some crazy games here, our last three games. And, you know, last night was the same thing, and we just couldn't make one more play. And tonight we just made one more play. And uh, what, a, what a gut check by our guys, man. We just really had nothing going, especially on offense. Uh, but we stayed with it, and the game's played 40 minutes and couldn't be happier for, for, for these guys. And this one, last night didn't go our way, but this one did. That was a great win. How important is it to get that kind of uh, experience in a tournament format like this down late, able to convert like that in a crucial moment. Oh, huge. And these are such good teams. And, you know, Coach Moser and Loyola team that I'm really familiar with, I have so much respect for them. And so this is a really good win for our team. And it is. You know, we've got a young group. And, you know, freshman last night, you know, makes two free throws to put us into OT. Freshman hits the game winner here tonight. And uh, that's just great experience. And I'm excited about this group. Coach, congrats on the win. Thank you. Back to you, Scott. Nico Medved. Uh Head coach of Colorado State, they improved the four and three, Loyola three and four. Colorado State will be in the consolation finals tomorrow, and we will come up with our next game coming up here. New Mexico State will face off against South Florida coming up in about 33 minutes for the crew. And for my partner, Kyle Yeoman, Scott Colotti saying so long. Once again, the final score, you see it on your screen. Colorado State 61, Loyola 60. So long for now from Flow Sports.